Hello traders, Nick Shaheen here looking at Twitter. They reported earnings after hours and uh, the stock reaction was violent in either way. They spiked, they fell, and they're spiking again right now. You can see it at 62 and change. So <clears throat> it closed at uh, just under 60. Uh, disclosures last year, at the end of last year, I, I picked a couple of like surprise winners for this year. GoPro was one and boy did it deliver thanks to the sh shenanigans that went on with GME. And Twitter was the other one. My thesis w for Twitter was somewhat technical, and I'll show you in a little bit. But more importantly, it was like maybe this is the year where the management actually puts its heads together, head together, and come up with a plan to um, monetize their user base. One of their acquisitions last year kind of like brought that idea to mind. Um, and and then so the, the trade was profitable, and I decided to close it and flip once they started their shenanigans with uh, their social media battles with the political aisles. Regardless of whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, it's never a good idea to try to antagonize a lot of your users, uh, a big chunk of users. So I thought that, well, that kills my thesis because if even if they grow the monetization of their user base, they're maybe shrinking their user base or putting it in jeopardy. How about that? Just putting it in jeopardy. So it didn't work for me anymore. So I flipped. I booked my profit and I was like, you know what? I'm going to try with some puts. So I bought way out of, uh, way out in time puts. And to protect myself over the earnings, I bought a small call spread. So if it pops and it rallies from the earnings, I'll make up the difference of what I lose on the puts and I can still leave the puts for eventually deciding what to do with them. So yes, I am bearish on on the stock, but not like hardcore where I short it, I borrowed it and short it to, that's lunacy these days. So, um, and that is my position. That's my disclosure on it. As far as the platform itself, I loved it. I was from the original um, users in there. That's why my handle doesn't have underscore three two five or anything like it's racer nick that's it uh, <laughs> exactly how i spell my name i didn't have to change underscore this or anything so i was there from the beginning when they were sharing a video explaining what the hell twitter was so um definitely not a hater uh, but a recent unfan how about that a recent unfan um from the stock perspective okay this is a daily chart is it a year it's about a year so definitely ascending right and there are some other lines that are in here that come from where and i'll show you i'm going to go to a monthly chart to show you the big picture so it came out of the box screaming and then collapsed i was selling puts down here i remember selling a set at nine dollars so somebody was worried about losing the nine dollar line i was like oh i'll buy it from you at nine that's what it means to sell puts and then we had several different breakouts the most um sharp the sharpest one was right here it was the clearest run and then this was the last one on the monthly chart it still has ways to go where it is right now is right here uh 62 ish which brings me to one candle that matters in my opinion right now and that's this one right there so if if let me see here can i do that one second i'll do it in a second so this is a doji technical term to mean indecision uh, they can't make up their mind. So um, the candle means uh, where it opened, where it closed, it's high, and it's low. And remember, this is one month of data. So it opened here. They they loved it, and then they hated it, and then they said, you know what? I, I don't really know. Let's just go back and close it where it was. So the whole month, they opened here. They rallied to here. They fell to here, maybe not in that order. And then they became back. And they say, I don't know. Let's just kick the can one more time. They kicked the can and they decided they hated the heck out of it to oblivion, right? So that is an important point in time. And look how close it is to, to right now. And pretty darn close to my two upside uh, targets that I had from before. So if I'm long, this is a place not to start long. How about I say it this way? It's definitely not an obvious place to start long. That's politically correct. It's not negative. It's just saying if somebody wants to pile in long up here, then they definitely have a specific reason for it or a really, really, really long span of time where they can hold it. Um, definitely um, not what I see as an obvious point of entry, not for me. Uh, is it an obvious short? Eh, I, I would short it the way I... I 
the, the easiest way to short something is a debit put spread. So I buy a put and I sell a put lower, say $10 wide, and if it falls, I would have spent two, three bucks to make six or seven. That's the easiest way to short it. You put a finite amount of money. If I buy a $200 put spread and it's $10 wide, I can make 800 if I'm right. That's, how easy is that? That's the easiest way to do it. But um, to actually chase it up here with two hands just because somebody says it, it's, it's good to go. Uh, let's, let's listen to the company itself. So let me bring you to, where's the headline I read? One second. Benzinga, where are you? There we go. Benzinga. That's their tool. Benzinga, um, what is it called? Pro. <laughs> um, and Okay, there we go. So they beat on earnings by a little bit, seven cents. They beat on sales by a little bit, I think 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Uh, so here's a company, how confident are they or not? They just beat and they did better than last year and better than expected. And then they guide lower, lower sales levels than levels. Than what. So what kind of a weak management would say, look how well we did. Uh, we're not going to do that well next time. That doesn't exude confidence. And I think they guided lower. Uh, so it was a disappointment to what they were expecting lower. But here's here's the kicker. Somebody just posted this in my chat room, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mike, if your name is in here. Yeah, sorry about that. So um, they posted this, and I took twi the first statement: uh, Warren's user growth to slow. That's what I was talking about. That's the reason I ditched it. Yet people love it. So go figure, right? The reaction to the earnings, the overnight reaction, purely bet, purely bet. If you think you've got smarts on that one, you're wrong. If you flip a coin, you'll be just as right. All right, so let's talk Turkey. Let's see if we can get smart with the intra, intricate, let me see here, two hour, four hour chart. All right, so this is where it is right now, after hours. If I were to get long, I would wait for a dip. Where to? At least to revisit the actual neckline. You don't believe me? You know what the overnight low was? 56, right here. That's exactly where I, the breakout. Look, these are not coincidences. This little candle right there, this top, they're not coincidences. So I would wait for a dip to here at least to re-engage long. In fact, I will do an alert here. So this is the overnight low. I'm pretty sure of it. Let me go double check. Yep, that was the span of the candle. So they're still fighting it out inside this whole zone overnight. So I will wait to, ha to see what happens tomorrow. So look at it. Here's an ascending channel. It's nothing but a simple regression line, you know, uh, a best fit uh, representation of the action. The bulls are in charge. I don't doubt that. The bulls are in charge. That doesn't mean you can't short a stock when the bulls are in charge. You can trade the range. So it's up here. Does this look like an obvious point of entry? Not to me. Even if I have to miss more upside, that's totally okay. If you're a trader and you can't see a stock rally without you, you're going to get caught long one day and get hurt really bad. It's not a good idea. It's bet uh, To me, it's better to miss on an upside than to get in wrong in a stock. So what's wrong with waiting for it to at least give back to this much? This will be reverting to the mean. And it, it just needs either time to mature or a drop. So there's no rush to buy it out here, especially not after hours. If I wanted to get long it, I would use puts uh, by selling puts. If you don't know what that is, I can do a quick uh, introduction. So um, let me go get the premiums first so I can speak with exact numbers. All right, so I can't quote the exact premiums because, A, I don't want this to be a trade alert or trade idea sharing. Um, and I just want to share it as an example. Plus, the premiums are going to change by tomorrow because the implied volatility from the earnings is gone. I will use the April example, so that will have a less effect on that because it's further out in time than, say, next week, so it should completely implode. Uh, so I can get long Twitter by selling puts in the 45 to 44 area and collecting between $1 and $2 per contract. So if I'm willing to, to buy 1,000 shares, I can collect $1,000 or $2,000 just by sheer promising somebody, hey, I'm your buyer at 44 or 45. Anytime you want to hit me up and give me those shares at those prices, I'm yours. They'll say, great, hold that. I'll hold you accountable. Here's my money. 
So I sold somebody some insurance. Or I sold somebody a lottery ticket that Twitter is going to fall. Like if a bearish guy like me wants to thinks that it's going to fall between now and April 245, they would buy that put from me. I would be the opponent. I would be selling them that put. I made the market. They took the bet. And uh, either case, my worst case scenario will break even somewhere down here. So instead of buying the shares up here and hoping for a rally to win, and exposing myself to losses if it does if it does fade um, I would need a 30% drop before I start losing money because the drop will happen the trade will show losses but my commitment is to buy the share so who gives a rip let it show as many losses as it wants because the only thing that will cause me losses is for me to actually get assigned the share I wake up owning the shares and that bet disappears I keep the cash I collected for selling it and my break-even point would be that amount of cash below the, the price I got to put the stock at so if I get put the stock and I wake up and the stock is up a buck I made money and I kept the, the two grand or the grand I, I collected for taking the, the, the position anyway. So I won't use my buddy Dave <laughs> as an example again, but that's happened many times before where a stock drops, I get assigned, and then the next day it will pop. When I, I wake up, I own shares and the stock is up. That happened to me with Suncor years and years ago. I think it was at $30. I was short a put, part of a put spread, and it closed within a penny and they assigned me the shares and on Monday that was a Friday expiration and then on Monday the stock opened up a buck I made another uh, one dollar times the number of shares I had I think it was a thousand or two thousand shares I can't remember so it's not the end of the world you don't want to get assigned shares that go to zero but this is Twitter they do have a business and they do have an income stream and they do have um, a P&L a valid P&L so here we go Revenue two and a half billion to three point four billion since two thousand and sixteen. Not too shabby. Net income going the wrong way. They lose one point three billion, um, which is fine. This is a growth company, but show me the growth. I mean, that's not exciting growth by today's measure. I mean, it's, everything's going so crazy. So um, gross profit from one point six to two point two. Not bad. So it is a legitimate business. If I look at statistics, it's only thirteen. I say that. And I cringe when I say that. 14 times sales. So stock price has almost 14 years worth of current sales baked into it. Sounds high. When I compare it to Amazon, which is under 5. So Amazon grows 30% a year, every year for a decade. Why does it not deserve a higher valuation from that perspective? I'm not talking value of the company, like how profitable it is. But the sales of the, the stock price relative to basically the growth that they give it so they give amazon only credit for four and a half 4.7 years yet they give twitter 14 this doesn't sound right that's more than apple by the way more than facebook um less than tesla after its big run so it's not in that league yet it is priced as such which tells me it's extended and and look it was four and a half seven 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 and now it's doubled what happened since 2019 to now uh, that it doubled not that much in the upside up here so that's why I'm hesitant to say yay let's let's go up 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 and away all right so 13 minute video I didn't mean it to be that long but we went over uh, a lesson on selling puts um, I'm not a hater of the company um, I don't like their the, the, how the stock is acting and I, it's definitely not a an obvious place for me to jump in long after this um, if if I'm not long, I should admit, hey, you know what? Maybe I missed this one. Let's wait for a pullback. How about that?